Hello, Midnight TCG members. This is Midnight Fox, and we're coming to you with this week's Competitive Edge podcast. This week we have myself, Jinzaki. Nah. Uh, not so happily joining us, and Eddie Phoenix. Meow. And this week we're uh, talking about the big discussion out in Yu Gi Oh! land right now, which is the Forbidden List. Uh, we all have our thoughts on what's happened with this list. And so, I mean, usually we see Konami give us something back. We really didn't get that this time. We see them try to slow down some decks, but we didn't really get that on this one. But I don't want to go into too much of what we're going to rant about throughout this podcast. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, just start out uh, starting with disappointments about the band list uh for the fox myself uh one of the disappointments for me was seeing sangin go banned although i can kind of understand where they went with that so many of our searchers like rabbits and tour guide they all are under 1500 and there are a lot of broken decks that can still be broken with singing, although with the tour guide engine, we've seen less use of it because as an Xyz unit, it's not able to gain its effect. But still, it's a searcher. It can search almost anything that runs an engine because, let's face it, every meta deck has an under 1500 part of their engine. So trying to see where they went on that. Uh, Zen Mighty, of course, went... Uh, Forbidden, and Wind Up Magician went uh, to limit it. For me, I would think that Wind Ups have topped so many events that they would really look at hitting that harder. Uh, Zen Mighty, yeah, it's it's good at bringing back or bringing out other Wind Ups that really keep the engine going, and Magician is good about searching things, but I don't, I, I just feel like they gave it a baby kick to the scrotum with just hitting those two cards in wind-ups. So uh, the Fox was disappointed in what they did with wind-ups. Uh, one day of peace. I mean, the really only big impacts that had was with Exodia decks and Stall decks. I mean... I guess maybe Japan got mad because Jarrell uh, was, like, kicking it over in Japan on the last format. Maybe that's why they hit one day of peace on us. Pers Unlimited. I'm disappointed to see that. Yeah. Warning at one, I mean, they tell us, hey, you want to, we want to slow down the pace of the game. Okay, well, you just took away one of our negators. Although, with the cost of 2,000 life points... There were some people still running, too, but it was kind of working that way. So I wouldn't really say that's a disappointment. To me, though, Thunder King Ryo going semi-limited. To me, that's a disappointment. Yet again, they say we want to slow down the game. Thunder King Ryo was your limit to draw engine. Yes, he's good for stopping special summons, but more than likely, if you were siding him in, he was to stop draw engines. So... They just killed some of the help for us. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about Advanced Ritual Arts because that's farther on. I'm kind of happy about that. But uh, my biggest disappointment was nothing came off of the list. And we had, had heard talks for two or three months from Taywart that uh, Goyo Guardian was coming off of it. Of course... We found out that Goyo Guardian didn't, and a lot of poor suckers went out and spent $30 a pop on Goyo Guardian. So, to me, I, I don't feel like they hit any of the real problem decks in the meta. So, to me, the, the whole list almost within itself that got released was a big disappointment. I have a couple good things to say about it, but that's later. What about you, Jinzaki? What's your thoughts on... Uh, disappointments from this newest release list everything <laughs> it's it's a bad list i'm 
kind of glad to see a Shien smoke signal back at three, but it's not something to be like, wee about. So, I mean, was there anything in particular you see on there that was a really a big disappointment to you or maybe something you wanted to see come back that didn't that disappointed you? I wanted us to get a second Shien for Samurais. I didn't. agree. And uh, like you said, the list is a complete wash. We didn't get anything. Um, Wind-ups got slowed down a bit. Um, it got harder to slow decks down with um, only having one warning and um, Thunder King being uh, semi-limited. And Black Wings got another Kalut. We. I'm not so excited about that. Give me a second whirlwind over a third Kalut. <laughs> so what about you, Eddie? What were your disappointments when looking at the new list? <sighs> Honestly, I would like to have seen Mermails and uh, oh, what's the other deck? I just had the other deck in mind and it just escaped me, but um, I wanted to see Mermails get hit because they're just ungodly broken. Um, what I am happy for is, yeah, sure, I get a third loot for the Black Wings, but as you say, give me that second Black Whirlwind instead. I can deal with the third loot, gives it more power, gives it a little bit of a boost. Um, Sandgan going forbidden, it's one of those why moments yeah but at the same time it's i can see why i think they probably want to push tour bus to the underworld can we have uh witch of the black forest back yeah so, something. <laughs> or something along the lines of them pushing other fiend monsters to be looked at but i do like how um uh, everybody has made mitch Almost everybody has made mention of Konami saying, hey, we want to slow the game down. And then they start banning everything that starts slowing the game down. Makes a lot of fucking sense. A lot. And it looks like Genzo joined in the call, so we'll get his uh, thoughts on it, too. But I... I, I, I I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I did... If we remember back during the... Uh, the predictions podcast. I did call for Sukiyomi to go unlimited. She didn't go unlimited this list. She went semi-limited, but I'm thinking probably by next September she'll be on that unlimited list. I'm going to say that uh, we did a horrible job with <laughs> when it came to our predictions. Uh, <laughs> we can to go back and say that uh, I don't think we really looked at anything, but I don't think we really looked at Konami to give us such an awful list. I mean, we've got Firefist coming in now. We've got the Mermels that are, and the Atlanteans, the Spell. We've got all these spam decks. It was time to hit Insector. Well, Insectors have made a huge impact, but it was time to hit Windups, and Zen Mighty, Forbidden, and Wind Up Magician. That is not hitting it. The real problem cards in that deck, and others might disagree, are Rabbit because of his ability to skirt rollings like Mirror Force and uh, Dimensional Prism by removing himself. And, of course, Rat, for his spe you still have a special summon engine. If they were going to look to limit that, I, I would... and factory any of those three wind up magician is decent in the build but your rat your rabbit and your factory are the real problem parts of that deck uh, zen mighty okay a lot of wind up players run it but at one it was fine it's great to see it forbidden but i think if they were going to limit anything they should have went more along the lines of Rat, Rabbit, or Factory. And they didn't. 
I mean, I, I know they want to push the rest of the stuff they've started releasing, like the spell books and stuff, and that's fine. Don't hit it yet. But windups have ran three formats already. Give them a fourth one. I'm disappointed, Konami. What about you, Genzo? What's your thoughts? What's your disappointments with the ban list? Um, the list is just blah. Uh, it did it didn't excite me. Uh, I know there's a lot of or was a lot of initial excitement at uh, Sam's getting an extra tutor, uh, Black Wings getting Kalut. Uh, I think I agree with Eddie that I would much rather have a second whirlwind versus a third Kalut. Kalut's nice, but outside of just drawing a really gimmicky hand, it doesn't really offer the deck that much. Um, Instead of giving us a Kalut, give us a second Honest. No. (laughs) (laughs) Kalut, he he could have stayed at three in my opinion. Yeah. Um, because he's just that. not as generic as Honest. Honest can go in so many different decks that it has to stay at one. Well, that's why I said that. I just wanted yeah. to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> he's wanting um, to freaking just tweak your nuts, man. That's all. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, but I am glad they affected Wind Up somewhat. I mean... There's been quite a bit of buzz since the list got released and a lot of the creative minds went to work. So there are, I want to say, at least two different builds I know that could still first turn Shockmaster. So that's kind of silly. Um, and they still have OTK potential. They just have to run cards of a lesser quality but are still good enough to allow them those Shockmaster plays and OTK plays. Uh, I would have been much happier if they would have banned Zemighty, which they did, and limited Factory to two. Um, yeah, but I think instead of giving them a wind-ups a kick to the balls, they flipped them. They just gave them a flick. <laughs> well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, <laughs> Zemighty is a terrible card, and it's gone, so that's good. But, I mean, Magician's a, an okay limit. I think I like it better than them hitting sh- Shark. Yeah, and Shark. I, 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 I just, about I just that. don't see them being able to hit Shark anyway because Shark. I suspect. Shark is actually one of the key cards to go with the factory, with the factory build, and it has the ability to either go to level five or level three, or be at level four. So, I mean, it's got the ability to go into your power monsters like Tyrus, Adrius, and it's got the ability to stay at four and go into Gem Knight Pearl, Black Ship, what have you. It's got the ability to be at three and go into Zen Mains, Levier. I think Shark is actually a really part broken, well, somewhat broken part of the engine. That's my personal opinion on Shark. It's probably the card that offers the deck the most utility, just because it can special summon itself, and it can uh, level modulate quite a bit. Uh, You put it exactly the way I wanted to say it, except in less words. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sangan, I mean... uh, it stayed in the game for long enough, you know. I thought maybe I would feel more affected, but I really don't care. Um, I still think people will run Tour Guide, and the majority of people who will run Tour Guide will just run Tour Guide, Tour Guide, you know, as a nice little one-card Ixie summon that's that delivers quite a lot of utility because, say, your deck was only going to make rank threes through your Tour Guide access, you would take less extra deck space for your rank threes, and you would probably only run Zen Mains, Tim Tempo, and then either Leviathan Dragon or Acid Golem for most cases. You know, some decks 
you know, like a rabbit deck. They would run Levier. Actually, what was it? Uh, Did you say Giga Brilliant? Giga Brilliant. Yeah, well, those would probably only be for the decks that really, you know, specifically wanted rank three as the real access point. You know, when you think generically, for most decks that'll want rank three, they're only going to want Zen Mains, uh, Tim Tempo, and Asset Golem, and then maybe a Levier or Leviathan Dragon, depending on their strategy. Well, people have even found ways around it, too, already. I mean, we already have had Tour Bus, which I run at least one in my decks. It's one of my favorite cards, and allows you to recycle Tour Guide. And r- people are starting to run Night Assailant at one because it's a level three fiend. Plus, if you draw into it, you get destruction. Yeah, it's not a bad card to draw. Like, um, there are other options like Dark Mimic. If you draw it, it does you really nothing except for replace itself. But that's a real good question to ask due to the ban list hitting Sangan is do you run Tour Guide, Tour Guide, or Tour Guide, Tour Guide, and X card, whatever that card would be, either Tour Bus or Night Assailant or whatever, you know. And the only real justification I can see, huh? What'd you say? I run four in all my, I run two Tour Guides, one Tour Bus, and one Night Assailant, which gives both my Tour Guides a target to hit. But that's just me. But yeah, I but, yeah, I took your advice and went from two tour buses because the second one was generally a dead draw to one tour. Well, you you look at it this way. Like I don't mind people playing tour bus. Obviously, it's a card. <laughs> it's there for people to choose. But the one thing I try to tell people is tour bus is always a bad draw. It always is because you're always going to want to have or you you're always going to want to have drawn tour guide instead because tour guide is your access point to tour bus from the deck, you know? And so like one tour bus, you know, especially now with saying being gone, it's hard or it's easier to justify that choice. Um, but I'm glad you cut down to one because two is way too much in my opinion. I still have my play, my play set. Cause I love the card, but yeah, it, it was oh. ending up being dead. Yeah. I went with Night Assailant over that so that at least if I drew into something, I had some destruction. What else? Uh, what, do you, what do you think about Thunder King? I mean, we were all disappointed by that. So um, they, they just I really don't they think, part of the draw limiting. I don't think Thunder King is that bad, actually. And that's coming from a guy whose favorite archetype is Thunder. Um... And he's probably one of my favorite Thunders. Um, I just felt that when I saw the list, I was like, eh, they're trying to protect their Ixies. They want to keep people involved in that, and they're going to be bringing Synchros back, so they want less things to counter that. But realistically, when you look at decks as, you know, not just an individual deck here that, oh, I ran three, so this hurts my deck, but just decks... You know, as an overview, most decks only ran two, two, two Thunder Kings. Some people mained one and sided a second, or they mained two, or they sided two. There are very few decks that actually ran three. So I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it, it, it's also kind of a, like a limit that doesn't make sense because because of that very reason. I mean, if you were wanting to prevent that card from doing something to your game, you're either going to limit it or ban it. And you can't ban Thunder King. That makes no sense whatsoever. And so the so does the limit. So in my opinion, it should stay at three. But again, like I said, I don't think it's that bad. The one thing I was disappointed about, and we were discussing it earlier about that for you, got in here with us was that they say they want to slow the game down a lot of people so much didn't run it to stop special summons because a lot of cards now are able to skirt that special summon stopping a thunder king they used it to stop draw engines so we lost a utility that slows down draw engines that that was my disappointment in thunder king going to two well, you, you think about it too, though. Again, going back to my, my original argument for 
or or my point, not argument, but uh, about Thunder King and why I don't feel it's so bad is we've had decks like Heroes, for example. They tutor like crazy, and that's what Thunder King shuts down. Um, and still, when Heroes were at their highest point, people were still only, on average, running two. So I hate, I hate to see him get touched, but again, I just don't think it's going to affect how we defend <laughs> the game. What other thoughts you got as far as disappointments? Any? Uh, disappointments? I'm disappointed that, but I also understand, but I'm disappointed that Mermail Atlantean deck wasn't touched. Um, I'm disappointed that Tinky wasn't touched. Like I said, I understand. They're really new and they're, they, they should be given their fair six months. But, you know, I, I just think, you know, <laughs> every tutor in the game, even theme-specific ones, from the Agent of Creation, Earth, uh, Hieratic Seal of Convocation, uh, e Emergency Call, they're all at two. Wind Up Factory should be at two. And so should Tinky. Tinky, that card, <laughs> there's so many decks that that card, you know, facilitates. It's just crazy. Um, but like I said, I understand they need their full format where they're allowed to play at three. Every deck gets that. Even when we can see before the card is released that it's going to affect the game in a really impactful way. You just have to be aware that it's going to be given a six-month format. So if they come out two months before the format change, don't expect it to get hit. You know, so so agree with the previous statement. I can't remember if it was Genzaki or Eddie who said that uh, Diva should have went to two. You know, tour guides at two, Diva should go to two. But, like, I'm pretty sure you said, Fox, that it could go to one. I wouldn't be adverse to that idea either. Um, but that deck's got to be given it six months, pretty much, you know. And the fact that people are really starting to develop the deck now, it's not just this initial idea where you see all this, you know, generic and really, how do you say, short-sighted focus. Now people have seen the deck play. They've played the deck. Uh, they've played the matchups that are important. And now they're realizing cards that, you know, just aren't as, as good as they initially thought. You know, that, that what, do you, what do you say, that first month of attraction is gone now. So it's time to start refining the deck. And the, the, the new Mermail deck that doesn't run Gen X Undyne, in my opinion, uh, I saw the deck, I heard about it initially for the first time two weeks before the top at YCS Miami and have been playing the deck since then. And it's really impressive. <laughs> it's what I like really... about Tinky and them not hitting it is its utility. <clears throat> it doesn't just go with the Fire Fist. Like, it runs into Macro Rabbits with Beast Warriors. It runs into Glad Beasts. I've seen people using it for Glad Beast decks to bring Glad Beasts back. So it does add some utility. Okay. But, <laughs> but ask yourself this. Ask yourself this, Fox. Would you be okay with reinforcement of the army coming back to three? And then there is your solution to that idea. Rhoda can't come back to three ever. It can't even come back to two, in my opinion. Tinky probably isn't as strong as Rhoda, so that's why it should go to two. But like I said, we got to deal with that six-month stretch. And then then they, we, we got to hope if it's affecting the game, you know, in a extremely negative manner, then we have to just hope that Konami agrees with us and, and, and gives it the hit it deserves. But I like Tinky. You know, like that's what a lot of people... Uh, well, I see a lot of people, you know, they'll dislike a card, and that's the only reason why they want it hit. I'm very honest, um, and that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a message for you duelists out there. Always be honest uh, with yourself. 
And I enjoy Tinky. I run it in every deck I can. Uh, it's just great utility. It searches so many things. So, you know. Um, oh, did he leave? Oh, no. Okay, I see. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, so I enjoy the card. I think it's a great card, but it should still be hit regardless if I like it. You know, that's just like me saying, I like Yada Garasu, bring it back. Or I like Delinquent Duo, bring it back. I like you know? Honest, bring it back. <laughs> so I guess we need a talking point while we're waiting on Ben. What all have you guys covered so far? The disappointments, yeah. what we were looking to happen, there he is. Okay. Have we mentioned any of the limits yet? Yeah, we mentioned well, everything. I think oh, we, okay. One day, what do you I'm think still, one day apiece? What do you think of them limiting it? Um, there's another example. I love One Day of Peace. What a great card. It's exactly where it needs to be now. I had my own thoughts on that. That was a disappointment to me. <laughs> but, okay. Well, from disappointments, uh... <clears throat> well, I mean, if, if there weren't decks that just made that card, ah, uh, you know, just... It's a great card, but the decks it kind of reinforces are the kind of decks that you don't want to see. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't like playing Exodia. That's what that means. Okay, so you don't like Okay, so you don't like OTK and FTK. I can understand that. But nine times no, no, out of no, no, ten. No, 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 no. I like OTK and FT decks. Oh, it's a natural progression of a natural deck. That's a guy playing with himself, and I don't mean to sound, you know, <laughs> off, but that, that's I don't like that type of game. Okay, so you don't like games where it's just like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and just take like 10 minutes to do my turn, and then... Yes. Like, I'm going to draw as much as I can, and if I don't draw my win condition, I'm protected from you next turn. Okay, that's... that... I can understand that. You know, just like with me, I can't stand someone who just sits there yeah. and just goes, "Oh, like here's I said, two I think cards, the card's great." Like the card. Yeah. Yeah. Or they go Royal Magical Library. <laughs> Let me just start drawing. And yeah. then again, if I don't hit my OTK, I'm safe next turn. You know what I mean? Nobody likes losing to Exodia because most Exodia decks, or we'll say 99% of them, is just a pile of cards that the opponent tries to draw. He doesn't care if you're sitting across from the table from him. He just wants to draw his deck. Okay, not like nine, I'm going to say 99% of duels don't like losing to things like Atlanteans, where it's, oh, I'm just going to just drop everything from my hand to make this happen, and everything on your side of the field is gone. You have nothing to defend yourself with. Punch, punch. Are you dead yet? Punch. Nobody likes to lose. I agree. Just like with wind-ups, nobody likes to just go, I'm just going to synchro like seven, or not synchro, but fucking XYZ eight, nine times this turn. And then, whoop, there goes your field. Uh, and Zectors, oh, there's two cards that I need. Just, 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 your field's gone, and I just start punching you, and you have nothing to counter with. I think nobody the, likes the, having a shot to win. I think the yeah. big disappointment to most of us is, I think everybody understands Mermels and Fire Fist and all that. But I think we're all probably disappointed that they should have hit Insectors and Windups because they have been top in YCSs and they should have hit them harder than they did. They, they didn't really limit, they didn't do anything to Insectors and they did a small limit to Windups. It's still able to OTK and FTK. I think that's the biggest disappointment to all of us, right? Um, no. Um, What's the biggest I feel. I understand what players like Eddie say about Insectors. And while I agree with Eddie, I agreed with Eddie before they were originally hit. Now, uh, I don't see that so much. Like, Insectors are just a shadow of, them for, uh, of, of, of their former self, in my opinion. Like, sure, if they open the nuts, they're just like any deck that opens the nuts. Like, if you play the Six Amra player and he opens you know, two to three cards plus gateway or gateways part of those two to three cards. It's nobody wants to play against that, you know, but I, I think insectors are real then enough. And I think that's um, my, I think my case is 
uh, proven by the fact of the lack of Insector uh, players holding tops in any relevant tournament since their hit. Um, can they still be played? Yes. Can they still be unfair? Sure. I, I can't argue against that, but uh, I think at least now, you know, we, we won't know until the format actually changes with the new list to see if windups will really be hurt. Um, because like I said, from what I'm seeing, I've seen two builds and they're still pretty nasty. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and then on top of on the, the Mermail deck, huh? I won't argue on Insectors. They are limited more, but I think wind-up should have been hit a little harder. They've had three formats to run, and they're giving them a fourth format. Sure. Well, there's the possibility of a fourth format. That's looking pretty strong. <laughs> um, but the last thing I'll say about Insectors, just so my point's clear, and I don't want to be stepping on toes, because like I said, I understand where Eddie's coming from, because as soon as they get Hornet, it's, it's like have the right card or lose. I understand that. You know, and the deck can still put opponents in that kind of situation, just, in my opinion, not so much uh, as it once was. But I view Insectors the same way I view Six Samurais. I think they're on a level playing field. So I don't think they should hit Samurais any, anymore, just like I feel the same about Insectors. Well, from disappointments, we move on to what were we looking to happen for me, for the Fox, uh, I was looking for more hits to wind-ups. Uh, I really didn't expect them to hit Mermels and Atlanteans. They, they are too new. Fire Fist is yeah. too new. So, you know, I knew that was kind of out of the question. But wind-ups, I looked for a harder hit to them. And we always get something back. And we had heard talks for two or three months at least behind the scenes, from the rumor mill that we were supposed to get Goyo back, so much so that people were going out, popping out 30 bucks of Goyo, trying to get it before it come off the ban list. And then it ended up being dead. We didn't get it back. We didn't get anything back. And, I mean, as far in. Honestly, piss! I didn't sell the Goyo that I had for thirty dollars because I mean it's like <laughs> that's, that's one of those things where it's like, well, shit! I could have just made money for stupid suckers, but bitch. That's what I was thinking. I could have oh, well. made some money. I should have went ahead and sold it instead of thinking, no, I'll hold on to it, wait for the official list to hit, and watch the price go up even further. It didn't happen. So It'll happen eventually, Fox. Don't worry. And once it does happen. Oh dear God! The thing's gonna freaking skyrocket to like ninety to hundred bucks. So start collecting now. So you know what was I looking to happen? I was looking for windups to get hit harder, because really they've had three formats to shine. They hit a small part of it, but as Genzo talked about, they still have the ability to uh, OTK and FTK. There's still builds out there. Um, Solemn war, you know, to me, I, I never saw a solemn warning going to one because most people already capped out at one. I mean, honestly, like I said, we did our predictions thread. I never saw any of this coming. This was kind of like a kick in the nuts to all of us Yu-Gi-Oh players. I mean, they actually helped a lot of decks. To me, I run ran three things. Thunder Kings. Number one, they're chaos food. Number two, they slow down draw engines. I didn't use them so much for the negating special summons. Sukiyomi going to two, I hardly ever saw anybody play it anyways. So I was looking for it to stay at one or possibly even go to three. Um, and I mean, if they were going to give us something back, I was looking as far as Black Wings. I was looking at, hopefully, a second Kaloot. I mean, that's just my thoughts on what I was looking. And, of course, there was also the rumor mill we were supposed to get a second legendary six samurai Shein. Which Wait a second. Even we back. already had two Kaloots. A third you mean a second whirlwind? Second whirlwind, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's what I meant. 
<laughs> Anyways, that and uh, the second legendary Six Samurai Shien. They were yeah. Stopped. I can't get on. I can't get on board with that at all. I can. <laughs> I can. You want to talk about Insectors? That's. I would much rather be up against with any deck I'm running. I would much rather be up against a deck that's going to give me Hornet as a problem versus one Hornet as a problem, I should say, versus a deck that's going to give me two Sheens to worry about. So, Jinzaki, what what were you looking to happen on this list that didn't? The second Sheen. I wanted it. <laughs> I really wanted it. <laughs> I've got to... I'm I'm actually I actually feel bad for the samurai players because it seems like a lot of them were excited about the third uh what's it called? Smoke signal. That's it, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Third smoke signal. And just like Black Wings, as soon as I heard, you know, the first rumor ban list that looked like it was gonna be legit, I sat down with some friends and we started testing those decks to see what's gonna happen, including White Swarm because they got the third Lumina. None of them are any better than they were before. You know, like the only thing that was going to be good for sh- for uh, Samurais is exactly what you wanted. If they got a second Shein, <clears throat> that deck would be worth looking at. <laughs> Even in the heyday of Lightsworn, I only ran two Lumina at most. So, giving us three, that didn't make a big deal to me. What about you, Eddie? The card that would be really big would be Charge. Yeah, that would have been better. What's your yeah. thoughts, Eddie? What what uh, what were you looking to happen on this list? Uh, again, I would just go back to the whole Mermail slash. Uh, oh, Mermail slash Atlantean to be hit. Uh. And really, uh, I wanted to see plants get a little bit more support. But other than that, I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. I mean, economy rules half the time. It's like a lot of people will talk behind the scenes, put up a lot of hype, and then nope. What I do like is some of the lesser, some of the cards that have really went down in price. I do like, though, like Dulorn was down to two or three bucks a pop. It's up to tw- uh, anywhere between 15 and $30. So with the new band list up, I would really tell people before you confirm trades or sales, take a look at what's going on on eBay and Amazon because I almost got rid of a Dulorn for nothing because I thought, man, it's nothing. But then I thought, no, Mermel's Atlanteans looked it up, and it's going anywhere between 15 and 30 bucks and rising. So definitely, with the new list confirmed, take a look at stuff before you trade or sell. Because prices fluctuate depending on that list. Yep. What about you, Genzo? Uh, what were you looking to happen? <clears throat> I'll give you... Um... A different way to look at uh, ban lists as they roll around twice a year. This is how I feel about ban lists, and it's the way I've always felt about ban lists. Um, and it's this. I personally don't care if I agree with the ban list or if I 100% agree with the ban list. Because one thing I've noticed <laughs> from playing since traditional to the present day is that they're going to hit cards I like. They're going to hit cards I don't like. They may give you back something. They may not. So the way I've always viewed ban lists is this. Whether I agree or I disagree, I expect a change. And I think that's the biggest disappointment, disappointment about this deck and or this list. And I, I just kind of write that off as, well, Mermail and Firefist took off, you know, really early in their release and it was just too soon to be uh too soon for them to be affected by the list so the list was a disappointment because it didn't change i'm honestly going to say that with the speed of the game one of the things i looked to happen was i a lot of people thought black luster was finally going to go back to band i didn't see that happening 
because he's still a, a decent money maker, and he's not ran in every deck. But I looked for them to probably get rid of Reborn and get this premature back because Reborn still keeps speed highly in the game, whereas premature sticks it in your graveyard and it's an equip spell. So if it leaves, it's gone. I, I kind of thought Konami would have went away from Reborn and gave us back premature over that. What what are your thoughts on that, guys? Well, I was gonna let Jim go first since he decided to go. Good point in the chat box. <laughs> uh, Muka Muka. Um. Okay, go <laughs> <so> mad. <laughs> Never mind. Um, born being replaced by. Awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, I kind of lost Eddie there. Yeah, I know. Eddie lost Eddie there for a second. But anyway. I just, I, I would have thought, <clears throat> if you really, if you're going to hit everything else, I would have thought they would have at least hit Reborn, put it on the ban list, and gave us Premature back. Where at least you have to pay a cost, and if it leaves the field, your monster leaves the field instead of giving us a free plus one if you draw it. I mean, that was the reason it stayed on the ban list for so long in the first place. Was it makes because, sense. Yeah. Reborn is a free plus one. And it's not just your graveyard. Your opponent gets out a Black Buster Soldier Envoy at the beginning and gets it sent to the graveyard. Oh, I'm going to steal your BLS. Ha <laughs> ha! Unless I'm misthinking here... Monster Reborn is not a plus one. It, there might be a static advantage from that, but it's a one for one. You activate a card, you get a monster. Um, but it, it also brings a question. You say you you thought Monster Reborn would go because it's you activate it and you get a card. Um, and premature burial, there's a cost that can be chained to with like MST to to stop. But my thought is this. Um, I think those old cards that are just really, in my opinion, the only cards in the game that are broken, Change of Heart, Heart, Peace, Fellow Duster, Raigeki, Monster Reborn, all those like costless cards, I think they should be in the game. And I'll tell you my reason, or my reason for Monster Reborn being the one is because... In comparison to Duster, Raigeki, and Change of Heart, I just don't think it affects the game as negatively. I mean, I just don't. And I like the presence of those old cards. It keeps... I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. I just like it. Keeps it keeps all of our um, current cards in perspective. We can does, see how broken it used to be. That, but you know what's funny? is everybody keeps saying ban Black Lesser Soldier. And there are countless formats where that's a valid argument. You know what I mean? Because it's a powerful mm -hmm. card. But Fox just mentioned when he was talking two minutes ago, he said it's not ran in every deck. Now, back in Black Lesser Soldier's heyday, could you have ever imagined yourself saying, I'm not running Black Lesser Soldier? Not in I mean, if you had it. If you had it, you were going to run it, right? You were going to try to run it at least. You were going to have it in the deck and have some light and darks, right? Mm-hmm. Now, in my opinion, Black Soldier's not even a factor. It's almost a win more card, in my opinion. And that's terrible to say about a card so powerful that it's a win more. Like, hey, if I can run it, I'll do it. But I don't need to. And that just shows you, like, the state of the game, you know? With mermails, they don't need a Black Lesser Soldier. They kind of scoff at Black Lesser Soldier, like, all right, old man, whatever you I'm say. I've like seen Demock back, but we know with Spellbooks, that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, he can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say broken? That's one busted up guy. <laughs> and, uh, 
kind of what about uh did i cover everybody uh kind of what you were looking to happen i think i did mm -hmm. yeah I think, well then our uh final point is uh kind of what decks are we looking to run personally for me i'm uh looking at three different builds with this new format uh one of them is an, an insect deck, back to the old Demise OTK. One thing, and I did mention at the beginning, that I was happy to see is Advanced Ritual Art, back to two. So now, okay, most people would say Rabbit should have got hit. I'm glad it didn't, because I love Rescue Rabbit. And having Advanced Ritual Art and two Rescue Rabbits makes room for Demise to make an impact on the game again. Of course, you're going to run into things like Zen mains and all that, but there's ways to get around Zen mains and Maestro and other cards that can stop negation, Starlight Road, Stardust Dragon. But I like the idea of having two advanced ritual arts, so I'm looking at running a Demise OTK deck again. Old school deck, trying to bring it back to today's present day and age. And with You know what's funny? It's possible. Well, you know what's funny about you saying you want to run um, the Demise OTK deck because of Advanced Ritual Art? I actually look forward to maybe not in a big tournament, but on Dueling Network or at your locals, possibly at a regionals, I kind of is, expect to see a Herald deck pop out of nowhere. I don't disagree with that. I do, too. It just kind of makes back. sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Since we're bringing back Advanced Ritual Art, we might as well just say screw it. Say maybe we're Relinquish like a run. <laughs> hey, Relinquish. What? Everybody goes on after I say Relinquish making a run? What the frick? <laughs> Vanilla. Uh, you kind of broke up, so I didn't hear your whole statement. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody yeah, heard my like, Relinquished. Relinquished doesn't really need Advanced Art. You know? He can kind of make himself present in a deck all his own. I know. Stall, then, stall, stall. I eat you, I eat you, I eat you, <laughs> and I win. That and, sounds uh, wrong. Probably the second one. My second one's going to kind of go hand in hand. Probably either Grave Keepers or Six Sands because I've been fiddling with them and they're... They're coming along a little bit better. But probably the one I'm most excited about running, I still got to pick up a few cards for it, namely two Tinkies, is a Macro Rabbit running Tinkies. And your DD Survivors and all, because you basically got your Rota for Beast Warriors. You got a 2,000 beater in Gene Warped Warwolf. You've got 1,900 beater in Vorse Raider. And you've got the ability to pop in three Alexandrite dragons in the side deck and run a chaos build of dragons. It's kind of a funky build, but it's actually been very, very uh, effective. And it's not even the new format. I've already set up this deck for the new format, and it's actually running very effectively. So... Most excitedly, other than the Demise OTK, trying that again, I'm more excited about running Macro Rabbit with Beast Warriors because of Tinky. So, I'm kind of happy to see Tinky actually not get but hit. Macro Rabbit's really not a deck without access to Loggy and Dolka, right? Not really. There's so it's, many just, it's just a rabbit. rabbit deck. There's so many variants of Rabbit. Everybody... Their initial thought yeah. is I know Rabbit. But Rabbit, that's one thing I love about Rabbit not getting hit is there are so many variants you can run with the Harpy support about to hit. You're going to see some Wind Rabbits hit. You've got your Beast Warriors that can run Macro Rabbit. you got your 2000 Beater, and you can go into with uh, and use Tinky in that deck. And you got your 2000 Beater and Gene Warp Warwolf. You've got your dragons with Alexandrite Dragon and Hunter Dragon. And you can still run Chaos Dragons in the side deck. It opens up the avenue to so many different decks. I'm glad to see uh, Rabbit not get hit. 
I've also been testing another one with a enchanting fitting room and some drawl engines that runs a Necros, Exodius, and a Exodia. In one game, I was able to get all the pieces of Exodia into the graveyard. I was able to get out Necros, and then I won with Exodius. Rabbit opens up so many avenues, and so many people are so blindsided. I think if they really want to hit Rabbit, it's not Rabbit itself. I love Rabbit because it gave people a reason to look back at Vanillas. What they need to hit is what you just said, Lagia and Doka. That's the broken part of Rabbit was the dino version of it. But the creativity that's come out of Rabbit players... I love it, and that's why I'm glad they didn't hit Rabbit. I think and, they hit the right card. Hitting Sangin was the right card to hit in Rabbit decks. Because yeah. if you put Rabbit to one, what's the point? All that work they did repurposing normal monsters, all that hard work is gone. Mm-hmm. I think if they re- the only real problem deck that's come out of Rabbits is Dino Rabbits. If you want to kill... The problem deck of it, just just take Logia and Doka to one. Yeah, but they can't do that because then it erases a whole archetype with uh, what's that? Evolsars and Evoltiles. Like if you if you do anything to them, then that deck is just wasted. You know, printing time and. But so I think the semi limit to Rabbit and the banning of saying in is the right play there. Yeah, I'm. That's probably the one. <clears throat> I'm most excited to run it. Actually, made me dust off a couple of older cards too. Running this deck in Gen X Ally, Tri Arm, and Tri Force cards you don't see a whole lot of play with, but with the utility of running a Beast Warrior deck with Pinky, it gives more utility to running a Rabbit deck because it runs three controllers to give me nine options to go to with Rescue Rabbit, plus the ability if I have to to use Tinky to go for War Wolf or Vorth Raider just for high attack presence plus that boost of a hundred for every to all the beast warriors so you know i don't even use tinky in fire fist i use it in macro rabbit it's actually quite effective but that's probably i said three but the four I'm kind of split between Gravekeepers and Six Sams. I like them both. But uh, I'm more excited about the Demise because getting Advanced Ritual Art at two. And with Tinky running the uh, Macro Rabbit with Beast Warriors versus a Dino Rabbit running Macro. So that's my thoughts on what uh, I plan on moving towards with this new format. What about you, uh, Genzaki, if anything? I'm just messing with the Gagas. Yay, Gaga, Gaga, Gaga. Eddie? Eddie Uh-oh. has left the building. <laughs> I'm bringing Black Wings back. Because, well, they need to be brought back. And then, um, just probably some random deck. I don't know. I like Black Wings. I think it's a really fun deck. I just don't like Dark Arm Dragon and Black Wings. <laughs> I barely get to really top deck him on Dual Network, but in real life, man, I just. Hi, here you are, thunk. I love Rip. Black Wings Rip. too, but <laughs> I don't see the getting the third Kalut really making a change to any of my builds. So, I mean, to me, that wasn't exciting. It's not going to make a change to my builds because Kalud at two max for me anyways. I'd rather have seen two Black Whirlwinds. That would have made me excited for Black Wings. Here's a point to think about, though. Um, I don't remember what product spoiler mentioned this. But it was a message from Konami for pretty much everyone to be prepared for the new era of synchro monsters. So they're gonna re they're gonna be repurposing the mechanic. So if you are a devout Blackwing player, 
it might just be good to start testing out decks, testing out new techs um, to, to get ready. Because I do know one of the Synchro Monsters is a generic level 6 that is pretty good. You're getting a <clears> and level, Black five, level 6, a level 7, huh? and a level 8. We're getting a level 5, level 6, level 7, level 8. The level 5 is the Black Wing. It's going to be Graham, yeah. which, which brings back a level 4 or lower. The level 6 is basically a DD warrior where you just crash into something and you remove both cards. And I can't remember what the 7 and 8 were, but we're getting one no. at each level. No, no. The set. level 6 I'm talking about is a fire called Beast Lord Vulcan or something. And he pretty much has like a bounce effect, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. I, I could be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure the name he has at this point is probably unconfirmed. But it's Beast Lord Vulcan, and he may have 2,000 to 2,200 attack, something like that. And that's <clears throat> excuse me, that's something that Blackwing's lost. Like when the um, the sliding of Blackwing's as a really good medical happened when they started losing the utility at level six you know they lost goyo guardian and then just like zombies they really fell off the map when they lost Brionic because it's the most natural play you know what is it blizzard to a level four synchro summon level six go um so like i said you know black wings is a deck that can ixy summon but it's built to synchro summon so it might be a deck to keep to keep working on, even if it's like your secondary deck at this point, because if the synchro support comes out and it's good and it's generic, that'll be one of the easiest decks that has a lot of utility from Icarus Attack to uh, what is what is Eddie? What's the name of the the trap card that can like uh, Heavy Storm or Harpy's Fellow Duster? Black Bombardment. I was thinking Delta that... Pro. Delta Crow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Reverse, yeah. So, I mean, and then they'll have the three Kaluts still. They'll still have the one Black Whirlwind. They'll still have Vayu's accessibility from the graveyard. So, I don't know. It might be something to think about. So, uh, what are you looking to uh, fiddle with with this format, Genzo? Same as always, everything. <laughs> And that's yeah. the end of our, and that's the end of our, and that's the end of our show. Well, uh, for anybody who hasn't joined yet, uh, make sure to get in for the uh, Grand Prix tournament. Uh, right now we have two representatives of Midnight TCG. So let's get a few more in there uh, just for registering on both sites and entering your information on both sites in the tournament and staying in for the entire tournament. You get entered in a raffle for a Kalki Jotter or a Insector Gigamanus mat. So you got the chance to win that just for playing, just for being involved. And the top two each get a Prophecy Destroyer 10. So that is, as Eddie said, the end of our show. We'll see you next week with the Midnight TCG Competitive Edge Podcast. That's all, folks.